Welcome, everyone. We still have a steady flow of people coming in, so we'll kind of let that settle a little bit before we launch. Okay, it looks pretty pretty stable um, now. I think people probably will be trickling in uh, throughout the day, actually, so um, we'll just... Uh, continue to welcome them, but welcome everybody to Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Um, I'm Terrell Thompson, a manager of the um, IT accessibility team, which is part of UWIT Accessible Technology Services. And, um, you know, we, uh, we focus on ensuring that the technology that we use at the University of Washington is accessible, and that includes all sorts of technology, websites, um, digital documents, videos, software that we're purchasing, um, you know, everything that has a user interface has the potential to uh, either break down barriers for people and make life easier and make education easier and, and the work that we do easier, or it has the potential to erect barriers. And so, so we are all about removing those barriers and just making things easier using technology. That's what technology is all about. Um, and so this day, I think it's the 11th annual Global Accessibility Awareness Day that truly is a global event. There are things happening all over the, the world. Um, and we, for at least the last six years, have had a formal day ourselves on this day where we've offered trainings and, and workshops and, and done a wide variety of things to sort of commemorate this day and to advance the state of technology accessibility at the University of Washington. So today is no exception. We are, I've got a full agenda of uh, activities and, and over 150 people registered. So we're really excited about that. But throughout the day, we're going to have a lot of different things going on and a lot of different people participating, even though those of us who are speaking are from UWIT Accessible Technology Services it really takes a community to make all of our technologies accessible, and we really appreciate um, your interest and in, in your willingness to uh, to learn more about accessibility and to um, to do you know, good work to to help improve accessibility of our technology resources. So, so thank you so much for for being here. Um, I just want to share a few links. I've got a slide up now. Um, First of all, the, the official Global Accessibility Awareness Day website is accessibility.day, um, so pretty easy to remember. And there's a lot of really good stuff up there. So check that out just to kind of get a better sense of what this is all about, um, get some context. There are also links there to a lot of global activities that are happening um, related to accessibility. Um, also, check out our own website, our Accessible Technology website. We just launched a freshly redesigned and reorganized uh, website. So this has been in the works for many months now, and, and many of you have actually participated in helping to review designs and provide feed, feedback and, and participate in focus groups and, and so forth. So, um, so check it out, uw.edu slash accessibility. That's our vehicle for communicating um, all sorts of things related to technology accessibility, uh, mostly as they apply to the UW, but um, more generally as well, related to, to accessibility of different technologies. Um, that's also that same site uh, is where you can see a, a schedule of today's events. So uh, uw.edu slash accessibility slash events has uh, GAD featured at the top, and there's a, there's a link there. There's a schedule there, a brief schedule there, but also a link to all the other activities of the day. So now that you've got the Zoom URL, um, it's the same URL for all events today. And so, uh, you know, feel free to, to come back. Um, you're here for the morning events, but come back for the afternoon events as well. So, um, so again, welcome. Great to see you all. Um, I'm going to step aside and hand off to my colleague, Hadi Rangan. Going on, share. Oh, will you stop? Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are. Uh, I would like also to welcome you to uh, our Global Accessibility Awareness Day. As Teriol mentioned, this is the six years, and we are pleased to uh, that you have chosen. Uh, you have you have chosen to come to 
to our presentation here. So there are, you have a lot of choices, but great, welcome. So uh, as you probably have seen in the, in the registration, uh, we will be offering a lot of uh, uh, interesting presentation and workshop. Uh, I, before I pass it to my students to talk about the, how to test, how to utilize these accessibility testing tools, I would like to share with you a few points. Am I sharing my screen? No, not yet. Okay. I have only one slide. <laughs> this is one thing that I wanted to mention that, you know, today we will be uh, checking a lot of stuff about the accessibility of uh, or technical accessibility. But remember that uh, at the end of the road, you know, we need to focus on functional accessibility. This is a different topic and we presented many times uh, on that topic. Um, note that uh, accessibility testing tools that my students are about to present or uh, show it to you, uh, they catch up to maybe 30% of the uh, technical issues. We need always to, to do that manual checking. And then... Um, uh, uh, you want to read it, the share, it looks like it, uh, it's frozen on. Sure, it's frozen. Yeah, that was exactly what I was afraid of. Okay. <laughs> so the technical issues is the biggest challenge. So, um, so do, can you do that from your end, right? Yeah, you okay. Uh, What's that? Yeah, you can also share from your computer if it's talking now. Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, Should I stop sharing you? Yes, okay. I can. Sure. So in the meantime, you know, I, while, while the, my computer froze, uh, or, or says at least the Zoom is not working properly, sharing, uh, Mikey is setting up her, his laptop to start, but be ready for the next minute. Uh, we will be asking a few questions. You would like to know, get uh, some idea who is here and then uh, know about your uh, role and then also knowledge of accessibility. Yep, you should be able to talk about it. You? Yep, the side slides up. Yours, right? Yes. Okay, no, I think that that is good. So I, we will be sending those slides. I don't want to be, be I cut from your time. So um, go to your presentation. Sure. Okay. So Mikey will be asking you a few questions. Please be ready to raise your hand to his questions. Uh, the questions is about, as, as I mentioned, that this is about your role and then your knowledge of accessibility. Just whenever uh, this is the time, you know, you, you feel that uh, it uh, matches your situation, please your, raise your hand. Sounds good. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Mikey Wilson and I'm a student at Highest Accessibility Team. Um, yeah, we're just gonna be asking just a few questions about your, uh, your roles and your familiarity with accessibility, just so we can get uh, an idea of who we have on the call here. Um, so I guess the first question is, uh, which of the following best describes your position? Um, and as Hadi mentioned, if you could raise your hand uh, through the Zoom uh, when your position, the one that applied to the most is called, that'd be great. Um, so the first one is a developer. Thank you. Uh, next option is a content creator. Thank you. Uh, next option is a project lead. Thank you. Uh, the next option is a public information officer. All right, thank you. Um, our next question is, how do you rate your web accessibility knowledge? Um, so the first option will be a beginner. Thank you. Uh, next option is intermediate. Thank you. And finally, we have advanced. All right, thank you. 
Um, yep, we just want to get a quick pull of the room, uh, but now we're going to jump into our accessibility checkers. Um, me share the screen here. And if you want to request control and get started, Jessica, then go for it. Yeah, for sure. Hi, everyone. Hello, I'm Jessica. And then today, the first presentation and the first web accessibility checker we'll be going through is bookmarklets. A little bit about us. Um, for me, I'm currently a sophomore at the University of Washington studying human centered design and engineering. And as for Mikey, I recently graduated from the University of Washington studying computer science. And we both work with the UW IT and accessibility team to uh, assess the accessibility of software used here at UW. So regarding this um, web accessibility tool bookmarklets, this is created by a by Pixel and the Disability Resources Educational Services at the University of Illinois Urbana Campaign. This browser bookmarklet essentially allows developers to visually see otherwise hidden accessibility features such as headings and area landmarks. This is also a useful tool for visualizing otherwise hidden features or showing whether HTML markup is used with proper semantics for accessibility. Um, we can find this available on Chrome, Firefox, and also Safari. As to looking at how this bookmarklet works, on the right-hand side of the page, and as when you visit the website of this tool, you could see five rec rectangles, um, and then on the labels, on the top left-hand labels, um, we can see the names of each of these links. These labels are respectively landmarks, headings, lists, images, forms, and each bookmarklet link must be installed separately, but you are able to successfully install numerous ones. Um, from up top, we have landmarks, which basically highlight all area landmarks, headings, which highlight all H1 through H6 headings, lists, which would highlight ordered and unordered lists, along with how many lists, images, which would highlight all of the images, including their alt text, and then forms, which would highlight all form-related elements and the information associated with it. Along with this, it would also identify details such as the name, role, element type, and et cetera. Yeah, and now we're gonna just jump into a demo. Um, and I will also show you all how to install them real quickly. It's quite... Easy. Um, so yep, you can just go to Google and type in accessibility bookmarklets. Uh, it's just the first link here, accessibilitybookmarklets.org. Uh, once you get here, you're on the home page, and you can go to installation. And as we mentioned, these are just uh, browser bookmarklets. And so you can click on the text of whichever one you want to use, and just click and drag it to your bookmarks bar. Um, and then you'll be able to use it on any web page uh, that you want to. So uh, we come to one of our accessibility websites, um, and I will show you just how I would say the most, the two most useful ones uh, for us at least would probably be the landmarks and the headings ones, uh, mainly because the other three options, the list, images, and forms, um, you know, you can visually see those on the page, but landmarks and headings are, you know, not visibly able to be seen. So uh, I can just click on the bookmark right here. And it creates these little containers around uh, any elements, in this case, that are headings. And so we can use this to check the heading structure of the page, where in general, we know we're looking for an H1 that uh, is descriptive of the overall purpose of the page. Um, and then, you know, as it goes down into subsections, the H2 should be uh, correctly identifying what the purpose of each subsection is. Um, and then we also wanna make sure that we're only going down one heading level at a time. So here we can see, you know, we start with the heading level one at the top, um, in this form, you know, we have an H2 saying apply now, um, and then it goes down into an H3 into the lower sections. Um, and so similarly, we can use the landmarks bookmarklet um, to make sure that uh, the ARIA landmarks are uh, also correct. Um, and so both these ways are just structures in which screen users uh, get a better picture of the page effectively. So with these landmarks, you can see 
uh, that there's a, a banner, there's navigation, and you have your main content area. And so it's just ways that you're able to um, section up your web page for screen reader users. And then for each of these uh, boxes that come up, you can hover over them and get a little bit more information about the elements. So uh, yep, in conclusion, uh, these accessible bookmarks allow you to have a visual overview of otherwise hidden accessibility components on the page. And they're great for identifying these high level structural issues in your application, specifically with uh, headings and landmarks. Although like many of our other tools we're gonna talk about today, they must be accompanied by uh, other automated tools as well as manual testing. Um, yeah, moving forward to the next web accessibility checker, we have color contrast tools. Um, these color contrast tools um, are really important as users who have low vision or who cannot e easily distinguish between low color contrasts um, may need these tools. Um, and while these web color contrast checkers can be found in automated checkers, such as Wave and Andy, which we'll be talking about later, in this specific demo and presentation, we'll be talking about the web aim color contrast checker. Um, to use this tool, you essentially can input the hex values of colors to see their contrast. And while you definitely can use browser dev tools to check the hex of a certain color, we often use this in conjunction with another tool called ColorZilla, which will effectively let you hover over a color and tell you what color it is in RGB and hex format. In this tool, you can simply input the hex for the foreground color and the background color, and it will give you the contrast ratio to these colors. You also have the ability to switch the foreground color and the background color as to adjust the lightness of the color. This could be really helpful when identifying like what shade is, accept is acceptable. Um, more features include, um, you can see different places where the color is used, such as the normal text, large text, and graphic objects, and the user face interface components, and then you can also see whether the current color contrast it will satisfy the WCAG AAA AAA standards. And for th these different standards, um, for example, the WCAG 2.0 level A requires a co contrast ratio of at least 4.5 to 1 for the normal text and a 3 to 1 ratio for the large text. For WCAG 2.1, for example, it requires a contrast ratio of at least three to one for graphics and user interface components. And for example, for the WCAG 2.0, it requires a contrast ratio of at least seven to one for normal text and 4.5 to one for large text. Yep, so there are a few different ways you can extract color from elements. Um, and so I guess the regular way would be to right click on the element that you want the color of and go to inspect. And then in the inspector tab of the dev tools, uh, you should be able to find the CSS that was applied uh, to that element, um, usually in the middle, middle of the three panes, um, and that will have the hex value of the color. Um, so while this is a valid way of doing it, we uh, like to use uh, another tool called ColorZilla, where this is a browser extension um, where you can effectively trigger it, and then uh, as you move your mouse around the page, you can click on a color that you want the hex value of, and it'll automatically be copied to your clipboard. Um, so we will show you this, uh, how to use these as well. So similarly for this one, you can just look up, you know, web aim color contrast checker and just our first link here. Um, so you can see we know we need like a foreground color and a background color. Um, and we'll be able to see the contrast ratio. So we come to our uh, demo site here. Uh, I already have the, ColorZilla uh, extension installed, um, just this one right here. Uh, you can just look up ColorZilla uh, installation to find how to do that. Um, and so once I click it, then as I'm going around the page, you can see at the top of my browser, uh, it's currently identifying the, the current RGB and hex values of the colors. Um, so I can come to, you know, click on this color here. as you know, the foreground color. have picked a weird one there. Uh, 
Yep, so it's just that, that dark blue there. And then if we're comparing it, uh, just the dark blue there to the white background, right? We can see there's a color contrast ratio of 13 to one. And as that is uh, you know, graphical objects and user interface components, uh, that would pass the WCAG AA standards. Uh, so pretty easy tool to use uh, in conjunction with both of them as you're able to extract the color from any element on the page and then uh, put it into the contrast checker. So in conclusion, uh, for the color contrast checkers, it is easy to do if you're using the correct tools. Uh, and as Jessica talked about, it's helpful for ensuring that for everyone, uh, the codes on your page uh, can be seen and differentiated between, uh, and your components you know, can be differentiated between. Uh, and then, yep, we noted that it is included in other automated accessibility checkers as well, such as Wave and Andy. Uh, this is a helpful way of doing it if you just want to know the color contrast. So next we'll be moving on to uh, the Wave Accessibility Automated Checker. Um, and we'll have Alyssa and Cynthia will be presenting on that. So I'll pass off to them. Thank you, Mikey, for your presentation. Uh, we'll have Cynthia be sharing her screen as we give our presentation on Wave. Or I can open this one. Okay. Yeah, I can share my screen. So give me a second as I move this away up. And I'll switch over a little bit at home. Okay, I'm sharing my screen now. Let me open up. All right, so this is our presentation on the web accessibility checker of Wave. So before we jump in a little bit about ourselves, uh, my name is Alyssa. I am a junior at the University of Washington and I'm studying informatics. Cynthia? Um, hi everybody, I'm Cynthia. I'm a sophomore at the University of Washington studying human-centered design and engineering. Yep, and we both work at UW IT along with Mikey and Jessica and we're on the accessibility team. And our job here is to evaluate and examine UW software used internally and externally for accessibility. So a little bit about WAVE. WAVE is a free web accessibility evaluation tool developed by the company WebAIM. And this tool detects errors automatically. So it has an algorithm to look through the code and find any accessibility issues. However, this application is not gonna give you a holistic assessment of your application. We're still urging you to do manual testing with users with disabilities or to do your own keyboard navigation testing or your own code validation. So in the end, we're suggesting WAVE as a facilitation tool meant for human evaluation first. So how do we access WAVE? There are two ways to do it. You can use the online WAVE tool and you can use the browser extension. So the first one is the online WAVE tool. So if I click on the link here, you can access the wave.webm.org website. And here you'll have a field where you can just enter the web page address of whatever page you're looking at. So say we want to look at this web page, just load up and the tool will be loaded inside this tab. However, you can also access it via your web browser. So if you go to your browser web store and you find the Wave Evaluation Tool page, you can just click on this button here and a Wave will be loaded into your browser toolbar. And we mainly recommend the extension because you might have very dynamic pages or you might have a dev site that is only locally stored. So the extension is better for that versus the online Wave tool. So how does Wave work? Wave is centrally focused on six icons and these six icons are populated inside of a dashboard of sorts in the left-hand sidebar when you're using the tool. So there are six icons, errors, contrast errors, alerts, features, structural elements, and ARIA. And all these are populated in a sidebar where you have a multitude of tools to look at through the dashboard and through some extra tools that you can investigate further into these icons. So what are these icons? 
the first one is errors. And these are issues that the algorithm finds that will impact users with disabilities. And these are also issues that are WCAG success criteria failures. So a little summary, WCAG is a documentation that is standardized by the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, to be issues that impact users with disabilities. And when these fail, this documentation, it's called a success criteria failure. So these are issues founded by the algorithm to fail the success criteria. The next is contrast errors. Jessica went that over that a little earlier, but uh, this is text that doesn't have enough contrast with the background. So this may be an issue for users with low vision who require a certain threshold of color contrast to visually see what's on the page. And this is found through the contrast ratio between the text element and whatever the background is. Next, we have alerts. So these are elements that need manual evaluation. So the algorithm's flagging it as a possible issue. However, whether this is an actual issue or how much the impact is, is up to human evaluation. And we have features. So these are elements that the algorithm is finding to be enhancing accessibility. Again, whether they're actually used correctly or actually helping people is up to human evaluation. Next, we have structural elements. So as Jessica and Mikey were going over earlier, screen reader users need a semantic structure in their website to correctly perceive what is visually shown on screen. And these include ARIA landmarks, headings and lists, and all of these are summed up in waves so you can get a good overview of what your site looks like to a screen reader user. This also shows off-screen elements that might be hidden using CSS, and it also shows elements that are nested inside each other. Finally, we have ARIA, and ARIA is accessibility attributes that can be used to convey information. So you have we are raw HTML code, but that isn't always accessible. So what we do is we have extra code called ARIA to supplement it to make the application more accessible. However, rule one of ARIA, don't use ARIA. HTML is usually baked in to be pretty accessible and ARIA is often complicated and confusing to use for developers. So we tend to advise to stray away from ARIA, but WAVE will expose where ARIA is used inside a website. All right, so that's a little bit about the icons. We're gonna jump into a demo to see how WAVE presents this information as a typical workflow, and we're gonna show you a real website. So we're gonna have Cynthia share her screen and we'll go into it a little bit more. All right, um, thank you, Alyssa, for going over the logistics of WAVE. So we will be going over how to use WAVE on an actual website. So we'll be using the UW Accessibility Demo website, um, specifically the book, specifically the before version, um, because it contains a lot of common web accessibility errors and is really helpful for learning about accessibility. So like Alyssa said, there's two ways to access WAVE. You can take the URL, paste it in the WAVE website, and it will load the website um, in the WAVE website, or you can do what we're going to do today, which is to use the Chrome or Firefox extension. And if you click on the extension, it will open uh, a side panel directly in your browser. So work site panel contains all the sections that Alyssa listed earlier, errors, contrast errors, alerts, features, structural elements, and ARIA. Um, the one we will be focusing a bit more in, on this demo is the error section because it contains the most critical errors that ex affect accessibility the most. To go over the errors that WAVE has detected in depth, what you would do is you could click on the detail section, um, which lists all the errors that WAVE has detected. And to locate the, where the errors are located on the page, you can click on the icon for each error and it will shift the viewport to where the um, error is located on the page and also highlight it so that you know exactly where it is located. Um, and the wave can, can also show you a bit more detailed information about what the error is. So for example, let's use this error, for example. Uh, it says that the error here is missing alternative text. So image alternative text is not present. Um, so telling you what the error is helpful, but WAVE is really nice in that it gives you uh, more detailed information beyond just what the error is. So as you can see in the pop-up here, it, there's a button called reference. And when you click on reference, it contains several paragraphs about um, what the error actually is, why it matters to accessibility, how to fix it, and also some guidelines. So for example, here it says that the error is image alternative text not present. It says why it matters. Each image must have an alpha attribute without it. Content of image will not be available to screen or user. 
So to translate that information into the context of this specific website, what that means is if a screen reader user enters the website and this image here, this banner has no alternative text, they will not see the content of this image at all. So a sighted user could walk into the website, see the words accessible university and know that this website is about accessibility. But without the alternative text, which is what the screen reader can see, they will miss this text and information entirely. So what WAVE does is it points out this error and lets you know what it needs to be fixed. So WAVE is really good at telling you the theory of why an accessibility error is an error and why it's important, why it needs to be fixed. Um, WAVE is also good at telling you how to fix the error. And how you would do that is next to the reference button, there's a code button. And if you click on it, it's really um, helpful for developers because it opens up where the error is located in the code. So it's a really good way to quickly find how to fix the error, but most, more specifically where you want to fix the error um, in the code. Yeah, um, so if you wanna go one more, or oh, there's a couple more things I wanna go okay. over for you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so two more tabs, there's the structure tab, if you wanna open that up. And this page doesn't have a heading structure, but if you want to open just like the Visit Seattle website, we can show them um, the example with a heading structure. So if you want to get a good overview, this is an alternative to the accessibility bookmarklets. You can see the heading structure as well as any possible heading structure issues. As Hadi always says, you want your headings to be complete, hierarchical, and meaningful. And you can examine all of your headings as well as your ARIA landmarks in this tab. You can look at the order. However, of course, whether they're actually meaningful representative of the page is up to human evaluation. So you want to compare this view of all the headings on the left with what you're actually seeing on the right. And you can also see off-screen headings. So if you see, Cynthia, there's like there's grayed out headings. That means that these are off screen and not visible to users. So if you want to see where these are coming from, you can turn off and on the styles in that little toggle button at the top. And you also get a good linear view of what the page looks like without any CSS styling, similar to how a screen reader would traverse the website. And finally, there's some contrast. Um, we can go over that. So that is very similar to what Jessica was going over earlier in this presentation. Uh, Wave shows you all the contrast issues in a website, and what you can do is you can click on any of these contrast icons on the page, and Wave will automatically populate the hex codes for the foreground and background color. And uh, similar to, to the WebAIM tool, you can see the contrast ratio and the difference in the WCAG violations in the normal text and large text. And you can also play around with the lightness to see what will help you achieve a better or worse contrast ratio. That's Wave. Let me pull up the conclusion slide here. So to conclude, we believe Wave is great for people with some basic knowledge of accessibility wanting to learn more. So your content creators or your developers. And one thing we want to caution you is that there's a lot of detailed information. All of those icons can be pretty overwhelming to a new user. So we suggest having kind of a foundational level of accessibility knowledge before jumping in. And of course, this does not replace manual testing. Please, please, please do your keyboard testing, your code validation, and your functional testing before you jump into a accessibility checker like this. All right, so we have got one more tool here. And we're gonna be going over X now. So let me pull up this presentation really quick and share my screen with this new here, X. Yeah. All right, so one more presentation from us. We have the Web Accessibility Checker X. So if you weren't here for the last presentation, my name's Alyssa Vo. I'm a junior at the University of Washington studying informatics, and this is Cynthia. Um, once again, sophomore at the University of Washington studying human centered design engineering. Yep, and we both work at UW IT on the accessibility team, and we evaluate and examine UW software for accessibility. So about Axe, Axe is a web accessibility tool created by the company DQ, and Axe, similar to Wave and all the other extensions we've been presenting so far, is a browser extension for developers to, to run a quick in-browser test on demand to see how accessible your website is. So how do we access Axe? Similar to Wave, it's a browser extension, so you're going to be wanting to visit your browser web store and you can just click on this button 
And similar to Wave, it'll install from the browser. However, while Wave is located in your toolbar, acts is in a different place since this is a dev tool extension. So you're going to want to open up your Chrome dev tools. So you can go to your website of choice and you can either do control shift I and that'll populate the dev tools and you can then open it up there or you can use your context menu with your mouse user, right click, click inspect and it'll do the same thing. And from there you can add access the Axe Dev Tools in the tab panel in the upper right hand corner, or you can use the control left or right bracket to move your focus to the correct uh, tab in the Dev Tools pane. And finally, once you're there, you can tab forward into the tab panel and access the scan all of my page button, which will Axe Dev Tools extension. Um, and we're focusing on the free aspects of the Axe tools. You can also get a pro version, but the scan all of my page button is what we're focusing on today. So let's go into our live demo. All right, and then we're back on the accessibility demo website. And so like Alyssa said, you can either um, you press control shift I, or I like what I like to do is to use the context menu, click inspect, and where you would go specifically is that once you have Axe installed, this panel called Axe Dev Tools will appear and you click on that. Um, again, click scan all my page. If you don't click scan, it won't load any of the errors. So yeah, it's really important that you click that. Mm -hmm. And so Axe is kind of similar to Wave in that it captures accessibility errors, um, but how it's a bit different is that it presents the information a little bit differently um, because uh, and then, for example, how, how you would navigate these errors is going to be a little bit different from how Wave does it. So with Axe, all the types of errors, they're categorized into what kind of error they are. Mm -hmm. um, so if we're going to take a look at the alternate no alt text error again, um, how you would navigate, navigate it in Axe is you would click on the section that appears. Images must have alternate text, as it says here. And it will group all instances of alternate where, where this error appears in one category. Um, and you can view these errors uh, more clearly by clicking this highlight button, which will highlight exactly where it's located on the page, like here. And so how Axe is a little bit different is that um, where Wave might present all these errors in sort of chronological top-down order of where the error appears on the page, um, Axe groups them together in a category, and then you would navigate them category by category. Uh, and so what another way Axe is a little bit different from Wave is because Axe is mostly a developer tool. So it doesn't go into the theory of why um, an accessibility issue is an issue the way Wave does. As you can see here, um, for Axe, the issue description is only like one line. Um, here it says ensures image elements have alternative text or a role or not a presentation, which is a bit more brief than the depth that Wave goes into. Um, but what Axe does provide is that it goes in a lot more in depth on the coding side of things. So how you would fix that error in the code. So you can see down here, it has a section called to solve this issue you need to, and it will list a bunch of different ways, possible errors, and also ways to fix that error in the code. So it says fix at least one of these issues. For example, element does not have an alternate attribute, aria labeled empty, no alt attribute, and et cetera. So the benefit that Axe provides is that it's a software that can tell a developer how to fix an accessibility issue from the coding side of things. Yep, and then just one more thing that there's a, if you scroll up, there's a little link that says more info. Um, so if you want to get a more in-depth look, DQ does provide that information. They tell you how to fix the problem. Uh, you scroll down, they tell you why it's a problem, who it impacts, and also tells you a bunch of compliance data as well, which is a lot of information and heavily code-based. So this is another cautionary thing if you're jumping into Axe. And I can share my screen to tell you with the conclusion slide. So to conclude, X is a great tool for an initial testing of web accessibility. Of course, it's not an excuse to not manually verify the issues. As you can see throughout all of these presentations, each of these reports collects a different amount of issues depending on the algorithm. So you're gonna need to do manual testing to verify what are actually issues and to get a good holistic view of your entire website. Of course, X really only covers technical accessibility. These are again, 
issues that the algorithm is finding in the code and not functional issues. So X is a great tool for testers and developers who have a strong knowledge of code, we're able to correctly perceive everything in the dev tool space. All right, so that's X and I'll hand it over to Mikey for our presentation on Andy. Thank you, Alyssa and Cynthia for that. And I'll be going over our final accessibility checker today, uh, which is called Andy. So yep, again, I'm Mikey Wilson, and this is for Andy. So a little bit about Andy, which is short for the Accessible Name and Description Inspector. Uh, it's an open source web accessibility checker uh, created by a branch of the Social Security Administration. Uh, it's available for Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and Safari, and similar to some of our other tools, it's installed as a browser bookmark. And uh, it should be accompanied by manual testing. Uh, so in terms of how Andy works, it's a little bit different uh, than some of the other completely automatic checkers, such as Wave and Axe. Uh, in the sense that Wave and Axe check for all the issues at the same time, and you can see all these results grouped together. Uh, but Andy is split into seven different modules where you can only scan uh, the page for one module at a time, and it'll show you all the issues uh, related to that module. Um, and so the seven modules are the focusable elements, which is the defaults, and this shows uh, pretty much all the interactive elements on the page. And you can have some other functionality in there, uh, such as looking at the tab order, uh, as well as labels and titles that appear. Uh, the graphics slash images one is more self-explanatory. Uh, it just identifies all the images on the page and makes sure it has the correct alternative text. Um, and, you know, it looks for no alternative text and just any issues related to graphics. Uh, the links and buttons module uh, looks at the names of links and buttons and ensures that they're all unique and semantically make sense uh, for their functions. Uh, the tables module uh, just looks at all the tables and make sure they're structured correctly, things such as making sure they have, uh, you know, row headers and column headers. Um, and that the, their correct cell associations. Uh, another important one is the structures one, uh, which as we've talked about before, uh, identifies structures such as the headings uh, and ARIA roles in a web page. And so it's very important for uh, the foundation of understanding the web page for screen reader users. We also have a color contrast checker, as you mentioned before. And finally, uh, the hidden contents, which identifies uh, yeah, hidden content on the page. So for each of these modules, uh, it identifies the number of elements that are related to the module. So in our example here, we have, we're in the graphics slash images module, and we can see we found eight images. And so for each of these eight images, you can go through them and it gives some uh, information about each of them. So things such as the type of element, in this case, that would be uh, just an image, image tag, uh, number of accessibility components, where we can see here it has things like the alt text, uh, being accessible university, as well as the source. Um, other things that might appear here are, uh, you know, ARIA, ARIA attributes and ARIA rules and other accessible uh, attributes that you add to your components. Uh, another really helpful one is the Andy output, which is uh, effectively what a screen reader would read when it gets to this element. So it's helpful for verifying that uh, your uh, screen users are getting all the information that you expect them to be getting. Uh, you can also see the number of elements found for the module. So in this case, there's eight images found and it's split up a little bit more into what kind of images they are. And finally, the most important part is the accessibility alerts. Uh, and so similar to some of the other um, uh, web accessibility checkers, um, these are alerts you can click on and it'll identify uh, all the issues on the page, and then you can click into them for more details, and they'll link you to the external Andy site where you can find out, you know, why why it was alerted and what you can do to fix it. So, just looking into uh, all looking into one of these modules a little more closely, um, they're all quite detailed and they have uh, a couple different functionalities within them. Um, but we don't have enough time to cover those all today, so we'll look into one of them for now. Um, and so for the first module that loads when Andy does, and is the default, is the focusable elements. Um, and this identifies the number of focusable and interactive elements on the web page. And so with this, you can uh, 
do these things, do some things to toggle these um, interactive elements visually. So you can do things such as toggling the tab order indicators. So as we can see in this first picture, uh, it just puts a number next to each uh, interactive element on the page and shows where in the tab order it would be for screen reader users. So you can make sure that it is logical and you know follows what you would expect. You can also trigger things such as uh, the title attributes. So in this example table here, visually in the column headers, we have just the text CS, ing, and eco. Uh, but right, the but we have title attributes on each of these so that you know screen reader users will be able to see oh, this is computer science, English, and economics. Uh, and finally, we're able to toggle uh, label tags for your form elements. And so when screen users get to your form fields, such as this uh, this text edit box here, they would know what's, uh, what they're supposed to do with it. So in this case, uh, they're supposed to put the name there. So we will just go into uh, just quickly how to install again. Um, um, so you can just look up Andy Accessibility, should be the first link. Uh, similarly, you can just drag and drop this into your toolbar or your bookmarks toolbar. Um, and this Andy website has a lot of great resources um, that if you use the tool, you should definitely dig into. Um, it goes into, into a lot of depth for each of the different modules and uh, has a lot of you know, details about alerts as well. And so when we come to actually use this on the page, we can just click the browser extension I'm oh, sorry, the, the bookmarklet. Um, and so in this case, we see that we found you know, 25 focusable elements on the page and there are 19 accessibility alerts related to them. Um, so I could click on these accessibility alerts and you know, it shows each instance of them. When I click on a singular instance of them, it will highlight on the page where, uh, where that instance is so you can find it easier. And it will also have this, uh, error link here you can click on and that will redirect you to the specific alerts within the Andy website. And here you can see, uh, so like for example here, this form element has no HTML markup that would provide an accessible name for the element. It says why it's concerned. So if a screen reader got to this element for the form, uh, it would read nothing or you know the screen reader may, may, may take a guess. And so a screen reader user might not know what information to put into this field. And then it also gives, uh, you know, what should be done. Um, or in this case, you can add a, a label tag or you know, an ARIA labeled by or an ARIA label um, to ensure that all your forms are labeled. Uh, and then just to show some of the other functionality that I talked about with the folks with elements, just as an example, um, we can go to our more accessible website, which has, you know, the correct tab ordering. We can see that it makes sense as it goes throughout the page and what users would go to. Um, we can turn on the title attributes, so we can see, you know, this is the table that I was referring to before. We can see the titles for each of the headers, and we can turn on the label tags. So for this form, we can see what the labels are for each of these form fields. Yes, I'm uh, just going to wrap it up. Um, so, yep, there's a lot. Uh, so, yeah, in conclusion, it's another great tool for you know, in-depth testing of web accessibility. As you mentioned, it's not an excuse to not manually verify these issues. Uh, and I would say that it has many other useful advanced features um, that if you start using this tool, you should dig into. Uh, and it's, I would say probably the most advanced tool because um, you can do a lot of different functionality for each of the modules. And so you have a lot more, a lot more power to uh, look at what you want to in terms of accessibility on the page. Well, thank you. That is all we had for the accessibility bookmarklets. Um, and I will okay. hand it off. Thank you very much, Mikey. Thank you, everyone here. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm proud of my students who have uh, been working and helping with accessibility of the uh, you know, resources that we are dealing with. Uh, wonderful job. Thank you, Vince. I appreciate that. Um, for those of you who are uh, familiar with uh, you know, offering such workshop or sort of presentation, where some of us are in, in person, uh, everybody is using his own her uh, computer, uh, and then some technical accessibility issues uh, that we have, you know, been facing. Uh, it, it has been a lot of work. Uh, 
So we had to coordinate a lot of stuff <laughs> with each other to make it happen. But the one thing I wanted to just add to the presentation that my students have about the accessibility using accessibility testing tools is that there's some of the some results, uh, you know, from one tool to another tool might not be consistent because they might use a slightly different algorithm. And then, uh, but uh, it is not uh, rocket science, everybody can uh, learn it. And then one basic thing that everybody, I think, must do that is that keyboard testing. So that is a keyboard testing. There is no excuse, developer, designer, content creator, whoever you are, you know, please make sure that your, uh, you do that the test you test with the keyboard i would like to leave for five minutes for questions um and then after that we need a, about 10 minutes to transition to the workshop because we will be changing a lot of stuff here so question are we receiving uh, any question voice of uh, who is or voice of chat today we we don't have any questions. Um, okay. It is break time, so feel free to take a break. But if you have questions for Hadi and his students, feel free to put them in the chat. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, guys, uh, we will be sharing the presentation with you and then we will be actually posting that uh, all at our website, not tomorrow. Um, uh, we, we all need a small vacation after this. <laughs> uh, it might take a few days or a couple of weeks, but you will be receiving a link to the presentation, uh, the recording, as well as all the slides. Um, thank you again. Uh, we, uh, I think we need 10 minutes break and then, uh, then talk to you in, in 10 minutes. Uh, Anna Marie, my computer has some problem. I need to restart it. Please watch for my name when, when I come make me co-host. Okay, great. Thank you. And Thank we'll you. start the next session at 10 o'clock. Or a little, yeah, ten, let's, let's, be, let's be on safe side, 10.05, please. <laughs>